Welcome to another episode of Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement, here at the News Forum, where all voices matter. You know, technology issues continue to take center stage in Canada, from artificial intelligence to privacy to access to media itself. Our guest, Ashley Baker, returns to discuss these issues. She's the Director of Public Policy at the Committee for Justice in Washington, D.C. Welcome back to the program. Thank you for having me, Tony. Great to be here. It's great to have you. Uh, let's talk about AI first. Uh, what are the trends that you're watching there? Sure. So over the past few months in, in the United States and globally, including in, in Canada and abroad, AI has become you know, a much bigger topic with generative AI and all the lingering questions over, you know, how do we regulate it? Um, the technology has obviously made a lot of progress. There's a lot of data um, behind you know, behind the new models of AI. So it, developing regulatory framework when it comes to you know, personal information is, is one topic that's being explored worldwide. Another um, area would be algorithmic decision making, so to speak. Um, you know, how does this algorithm take into account certain things on employment applications or you know things that have real world consequences? So there are a lot of different use cases for AI, and it seems that there's you know a regulatory framework that's being considered for each of them. Yeah. So uh, in terms of the Committee for Justice, are you looking for a regulatory framework or are you concerned about the impact of a regulatory framework? Where, where do you stand on those kinds of issues? So we think that there should be some sort of clear regulatory framework that's a bit more light touch. I wouldn't go as far to say that, you know, artificial intelligence should not be regulated whatsoever. I do think that some of the proposals, for example, um, calling for algorithmic explainability, um, I think that's a, a bad idea is essentially, you know, expose your, your algorithms if you're the company. It's bad for you know, reasons related to, to property rights. And it also doesn't really tell you much, um, just, you know, mm -hmm. looking at the, the code itself. Um, maybe something more along the lines of what's called algorithmic explainability had a a colleague a few years back with a Wall Street Journal op-ed on this, and you know, essentially that would explain how the machine learning arrives at certain decisions or what you know inputs are used in arriving at that decision might make a lot more sense. But I do think that some of the proposals now are overly broad, and they're also not really tailored to the specific use cases, because we don't really know what we're regulating yet. We don't really know right. what will be the most impactful uses of this technology. It's very premature. Yeah, and I think for a lot of people, this sort of came out of left field. Uh, I, if you'd been studying the issues, as, as I'm sure you have over the months and years in the past, uh, this uh, this idea of uh, this next segment of AI becoming uh, very, very useful uh, would have been uh, something that you could predict. But for a lot of people, it's just all of a sudden the world is going to change and they're not quite sure how? So do you, do you think that part of it is just uh, acclimating people to uh, sort of the new, the new things that AI can, can deliver, or is there more to it than that? Oh, I think with the advent of chat GPT, obviously that brought a lot of things, a lot of existing technologies to the mainstream. But I would you know, contextualize it with the fact that you know, everyone here is already using AI in some form or the other. Right. If you unlock your phone with your face, you're using AI. If you're using a GPS navigation system, that's artificial intelligence as well. Um, and generative AI obviously does have its limits. And it's um, very much reflective of the amount of data that's you know out there, of the inputs into the system. So uh, some progress has been made, obviously, and, you know, making these technologies popular. But in terms of, you know, these, you know, cases of people, you know, afraid that we're going to reach the singularity next year, um, that humans are going to be replaced, I, I do think some of those fears are a bit overblown. It's more mm -hmm. of a tool that can be used rather than a replacement. Uh, privacy issues, is that something you're looking at as well when it comes to AI? I think so. Yes, there are several aspects of that. Of course, there's you know, what can the algorithms do if we're talking about generative AI, such as chat GPT, what can it do with your personal information and what is defined as personal information? Is that just your address and social security number? Or does that go beyond to, you know, more data points on the Internet that can be found via search engines? So that's certainly one aspect of it. And there's government too. I mean, there's you know, TikTok is a big issue right now, um, right. and you know, China is developing AI too, and they have access to a lot of data from other countries. And you know, that's one of the key. Other than infrastructure, you need massive amounts of data. Um, so from that standpoint too, is how is the government using this data? Exactly. No, uh, and I, I like to return to that. We are going to take a brief break with our guest. Uh, 
Ashley Baker. She's the director for the Committee of Justice in Washington, D.C. But uh, this issue of privacy has so many different uh, uh, factors to it, and uh, it deserves a, a little bit more of a deep dive. We'll be back after these messages. Please stay with us. <laughs> 